Hello guys and welcome back to TSBEC TV. Today we're going to be fitting a rev counter to my Defender. This is something that was an optional extra, I believe, on the TD5 era of Defender. Uh, but you can now buy them uh, separately and you can either get a genuine one that I have here uh, or you can get a video uh, aftermarket gauge which is a little bit cheaper but I wanted to go for the real thing because it matches the rest of the interior and the dials and everything and also has the TD5 logo on here which I just love that little detail. And I purchased it from Croitec. They are better known for their cosmetic interior modifications for Defenders but they do also do gauges like this and it includes a, a fitting kit and everything as well. So today we're going to be uh, installing that into here and now Nissa is going to take you through some of the installation process. So in this nice little piece of kit we got here from Crytek, we've got the manual. Uh, as Liam said, we've got a whole installation kit with it. That means all the wires, all the small connectors here, we need to jump the wires uh, to get things like the, uh, the lighting inside, the light bulb working, uh, and so on. Now for the installation itself, it says about 45 minutes it should be up and running. Uh, and it, it's quite nice uh, installation. Uh, manual here telling you every single wire uh, where it should be run and uh, what kind of connections you need to make so That's quite nice with the kit. You get the wires here for jumping uh, to the light uh, Bit of it. So you've got the two front ones here connect these two The other two just goes to another sort of a light source behind the dash and that will Make the bulb light up whenever you choose to do so the other bit here is the long remote wire that goes into a pen in the black uh, plug on the ECU. And the other bit here is for the uh, electricity to the counter itself, so that actually can move its, uh, its dial up and down. And to connect these, we've got, again, these small uh, fittings here to pretty much just jump from one wire to another one and make connection through this middle piece in the middle. And we've got loads of zip ties, zip ties to make everything look nice and neat for the installation uh, and of course you get the kind of locking ring with the kit as well to go behind it so pretty much a complete kit and everything you need to make this work so next up we'll go into the car and see what wires are already there and what wires you need to make uh, before fitting this kit all right so after opening up here down into the ECU we have to pull out the uh, black plug you've got a red one and a black one pull out the black plug and from here in the manual it says you have to count the middle row from the right to the left six connectors. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And right there you can see we already got a connector in this plug. If not, we in the kit also uh, supplies a connector for it for our signal wire to the ECU. Now, this is quite lucky because we've got a wire right here. So now we're just going to check the, the color code of it and hopefully someone from the factory has already run this wire from the ECU all the way up into behind the dash which makes our job quite a lot easier so we only need a power for the uh, the light bulb and we need power for the uh, ref counter itself and then just source out where this wire is and then uh, plug that in but hopefully uh, well we're gonna check it first and see if it's the right wire because if you connect your signal wire directly to a 12 volt that's gonna destroy the uh, the ref counter itself uh, straight away so we're going to check it first and see if it's the right wire we got going on as the TD5 got quite a lot of wires running to it even though it's quite a simple vehicle uh, so next up oh well, now we have confirmed that we got wire in that connector gonna go up open up the dash and have a look and see if we can figure out where this wire goes to if it is sourced behind the dash hopefully fairly standard dash there are only about three connectors you need to disconnect before pulling out the dash. Your first one is this big grey one here to uh, undo that uh, on the plug itself you push down pull out and the same goes for this plug and this plug. Those are the only three plugs that we found needed to be removed before we can take out the whole dash which is quite nice and of course you've got one screw uh, sitting up there and you've got one screw there and one screw there's one more somewhere on this side. Well, again, this this may worry for different defenders. If you go into that one, there's probably three other screws you need to remove to get the dash out. We took the uh, clog out of it. Again, a standard uh, Land Rover parts goes uh, on exactly the same way. Uh, as you can see, same kind of screw-on system. So what we're going to do now is take the ref counter and mount it. And as you can see, they are all identical, these two as well. So you can actually take these two out and move into the side and put the ref counter next to the speedo 
a spin up inside if you want that. But again, then you have to alter the wire a tiny bit because uh, then these wires have to get moved a bit further down. So for now, we're just going to place it right here uh, where the clock was to make it easy. There we go. Now just install the dash and it will hopefully work. Oh, yeah, right. We need to do the wiring as well. Now for the wiring, we got the light bulb here, plus and minus. For that, you can either take into these two, these two, these two, or these two. And of course, you can also do it from the main speedo. What we essentially just want is whenever we put on the light, on our light switch, we want power to go into this plug here as well. So for that, we get the cables, and we're probably just going to jump to these ones here out on the side, which illuminates up the event operations here. So we're going to go into these ones and connect the light so the light is done. Uh, we'll do that first. So the next bit was connecting the starting feed or the ignition feed and on the papers here it says you need to watch out for the green and white wire which come from this plug. Uh, it also tells you where it's located and where, where you need to you know, turn the plug to actually get the right one. I pretty much just followed that up and again all the other uh, instruments here needs to get a, a uh, ignition feed anyway so I just plugged it into the is that the coolant or the fuel gauge? No, the coolant gauge. So I just pretty much just uh, jumped off that and into our uh, ref counter instead of going all the way back and start cutting up the uh, stock loom and uh, doing that way. And again, I use these uh, blue connectors here. I wouldn't recommend using these connectors any other place in, you know, inside a dash or somewhere it's dry uh, because when you start using it into the engine bay here, they're going to corrode and you're going to have loads of problems. So I'm not a big fan of them, but as long as it's inside the dash and it's nice, hot and, uh, and dry, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mind uh, using these to clamp these small wires here together. So next up, we got the signal wire here. We're going to have a look and see we've already got one. If we don't, we have to run it out here through the grommet all the way down and into the ECU and plug that in. But as there already is a wire in the plug, we're gonna have a look and see if we can't find it beneath the dash. So we're just gonna take out the color code here, take our lights, jump in and see if we can't find it somewhere. So to make sure that it's the right wire we've got going on here, broke out this little tool here, which pretty much whenever, you know, the same wire makes contact in either end, it will make a Morse code sound. So this end will be plugged into the wire down here and the other end I'll start poking all the wires up here until we get this sound which means that the wire here is connected to the ones I'm touching up here and that way we can confirm it's the right one and then we can just go directly into that. So we managed to source out what kind of wire should be the number 19 from the black plug on the ECU all the way up here and what we found out was this big grey plug sitting on here it was one of the corners you can actually see we spliced into it unfortunately we haven't got the connector to make it all go completely factory otherwise we would have the wire run out here and everything should just be plug and play so we'll do that next time once we got the proper connector to go into it uh, we only got the female connector from the kit to run the long wire all the way down to the ECU if you haven't got it uh, but if you got it you need a male uh, connect on the same size to go into this bit then everything should be plug and play for right now we just got this wire here spliced into it should be the right one the way we found it was just using this again when the two wires connect they will make a sound so we just went out through all the wires and all of a sudden we found the correct one which is marked here as number 19 number six from right to left yeah figure out which one that was and again if that one is missing on your ECU you got the small plug in the kit simply just run this wire from here it's a correct uh, uh, what's called collar and everything run it all the way down here connect it into it so it's gonna look pretty much like factory but now you need to make sure it actually works when you turn it on you should see the ref counter go just about uh, zero if if it is a VDO it might go a bit higher because it needs to get calibrated first but let's go ahead and have a look. And voila! And even light in it. Let's 
So I would call that a success. So we're gonna get head out on the open road now and we've hooked up the Nanocom so that we can see the actual revs, engine revs there to make sure that it's uh, correct on the gauge. We've got a GoPro looking at that so you can see that uh, and then one looking at us here. So we're about 2,000 now. Yep. Is that correct? 1,948. Daniel from Storm Tuning, he always gives me a hard time. I don't rev this out enough. So, because obviously you don't have a rev gauge, so I have no idea where the red line I mean, you do know where the red line is, but I always feel like I change late enough, but obviously not. So now I have a rev, rev count, so I can actually drive it properly. Yeah, I think the limit is around four, three and a half to four thousand. I think my uh, hard cut limiter is about four thousand. So it doesn't actually show the red line on this, it just goes up to five. Yeah, but I think normally TD5 is about 4,000, it's a bit the safe zone. Uh, and again, revving a diesel is quite nice for it because then you can burn all the uh, unburned fuel that gets stuck onto the uh, the wastegate on the turbo on such things. It's quite nice. Said at the start, you can uh, you can go for the VDO aftermarket gauge, which is a bit cheaper. Yeah. But I think this this just looks yeah, it just takes all the boxes. Looks right for me. Just has to match. Otherwise, I knew it would have bugged me. So I just forked out a little bit more money for the the proper one. And again, as you said, that will just follow the car through its whole life. Uh, yeah. So when we at some point do some restoration work on it, we just take that out and put it straight back in. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not like. Uh, no, it, it's not has a break. limited lifetime or anything. It's, uh, exactly. it's going to last the next uh, 30 to 40 years. It will last as long as the vehicle. So if we ever do do that rebuild, then uh, we'll stay here. I'm just going to turn around and we'll do another run. Again, diesels are, you know, they operate best at a certain RPM level. But again, if you don't ever go high up, then let's say about 3,000 RPM, just going to start mocking up the engine because you can't get all the unburned fuel out. Uh, we actually saw that with my dad's TD5 after my sister had driven it around. She never goes back like 2000 RPM and that just mean, meant that the uh, wastegate on the turbo started to stick. So whenever you hit like high boost pressure it just goes like me, 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 me because you can't get that on from the excess boost and then it cuts like a limiter goes in and cuts down on the fuel. Uh, so that had to be made. So again it is it is okay to rev a diesel quite hard from time to another but mainly it's made for no So I think before I was always probably changing around three. Yeah. Because already at that point it's really like there's a lot of noise and vibration yeah. and you're like, okay, now you can change, but you've got about another thousand to go. Yeah. Like you don't have to do it every single time, but No, of course not. Of yeah, course well, not. But when when you're out on a long run or so, it's a good thing just to completely burn it out. Just make sure you get a nice high temperature. Two thousand now. Yeah. I thought I'd actually, I'm not even sure you can count it as a mod, it's 
like a an optional yeah, extra. Yeah, you had an extra. So, uh, but yeah, really cool. And uh, as I said, that will, that will stay there for as long as the car exists. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.